Hey there, tomato heads. It's Lauren here, Mrs. Tomato Head. Welcome to episode two of Lauren's Tomato Awesome Sauce. Forgot the name of my own show there for a minute. Hey, everybody. Glad you're here. I um, started this show last Thursday. It's going to be a weekly show at this time each Thursday. And um, it kind of came as the response of a series of <clears throat> videos, live videos that I did. It was a series of six videos that I did kind of unintentionally showcasing my 2024 tomato grow list. It started off as what was going to be one episode, like showcasing, highlighting my favorites of the list. And then I couldn't pick a favorite. <clears throat> and if you're a tomato head, you'll know exactly what I mean. It's it's tough to choose like 10. So I think there were some episodes that went three hours long and you guys stayed with me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All of a sudden I got a frog in my throat. Um, hang on. Let's refer to our water bottle of tomatoes here. Save me. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Let's get ready to rumble. So I'm very glad you're here. If you're watching live, welcome. I like being an interactive show. Um, this is my, my weekly Thursday show, but many of you may know I do a monthly show with my partner in crime, my buddy, Jen Joy. We do Tomato Talk Live, which is on the first Friday of each month. Normally, except for May, we're going to do something a bit different that um, I'm excited about, which I may share tonight. I'm not sure. Um, we had Craig Lahulier on last week, last Friday for our April episode, and it was epic. Not to, to like name drop the name of his book, which is Epic Tomatoes, but if you were able to watch, you know it was epic. Oh, Jen's here. Hey, Jen. That's me. That's my girl, my buddy. Jen and I, along with our friend Kina, we run a group on Facebook. Calling it a group is kind of, a, um, it sounds silly because we're so much more than that, but it's called Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. If you're not a member, run, don't walk, and join us now. We are more than just a swap group. We are um, a place to really showcase our, our joined love of tomatoes. We're a place of education, um, resources, um, anything related to the tomato, not just for expert growers, but also for those starting out or even those curious. We welcome all. So please join us on Facebook. Um, oh, it's a secret. All right. I'm not going to announce it then. Jen says it's a secret, what we're doing for our May episode. Um, so, hey, everybody, we like to, like I started to say, I like to showcase um, comments. And instead of me talking at you, I like to talk with you. So welcome. Hi, Rowena. Thanks for being here. Green Thumb Gardeners here. Robin's here, 80 degree California. I was there two days ago here in New Jersey. Today's actually, it was supposed to rain. Oh good. It's a little overcast. I feel like five minutes before I was going to go on the show, it, it's like, it's been like 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit today. Um, but no sun. And then all of a sudden the sun came out and I'm like, oh, good. You know, I could be outside, but I'd much rather be with you guys. Um, Jen says she's potting up maters while I watch and learn. That's awesome. Um, I saw Brian's here. Hey, Brian, glad you're here. I try to get as many comments up as possible. So what is this show about? <laughs> this show um, is going to be a weekly look into 10-ish varieties of tomatoes that I'm obsessed with each week. It could be a number of things. It could be swaps I just got in. Today's kind of a mixture of a couple things. It's still some stragglers from my 2024 grow list that I haven't mentioned yet. It's some trades that I've gotten in. I'm sort of at, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sort of at the cutoff point here in New Jersey where I think I still have a few weeks to go where seeds can accidentally fall, accidentally fall into soil and I can get a, a harvest. Uh, Rob and I did start our our seeds. I think it's been almost three weeks now. No, two, two. We held true to our vow that we wouldn't start most tomatoes until the end of March because our seedlings get big really fast with our process. Speaking of which, I have one in particular. Well, I have a couple of things I wanted to show you guys. So I've mentioned before, if you're new to the my uh, broadcast, um, something that I've termed garage tomatoes. 
And I know Jen Joy is planning on doing this as well. Last year, I started to say I started seeds beginning of March, which is great. Um, they're not really ready to go out technically until the end of May. Last year, we pushed it a little bit and we ended up almost losing a couple of things because we had a late frost on May 17th. I know the date because it was my son's birthday. Um, but what happened was we got some varieties that were just so big. So normally we, here's my process in a very quick 30 second nutshell. We start seeds halfway down in either a solo cup or one of these. This is the new Bootstrap Farmer 3.3 inch pots that I'm in love with. Then continue adding soil up the roots because tomatoes develop stems along, stems along the roots, making it a monster healthy, healthy root system, monster plant. Um, then we, they get to either that or this, and they've very much outgrown. This is one of my bananas noir, grows like a monster. This was started February 4th, more as like a, not to actually start for this season, but more using it for like some tomato experiments. Goes from that normally to these guys. These are, now this one was up potted a little too early, but I wanted to show you guys the size of the grow bags. These are nine inch nine by nine inch seedling grow bags that we get from Amazon. These things get massive in here, um, but this is where they go when they outgrow the solo cup or those things, they go into one of these until normally they meet their final planting place. But started some early. So last year we had some that outgrew those. What to do? We put them in 10 inch, um, 10, 10 inch, 10 gallon grow bags. We had like 10 of them and I was dragging them out during the day to the driveway and then dragging them in the garage at night when it got too cold. So these were our garage tomatoes and we had an early harvest of some really great tomatoes. So what started, what was a mistake has now become, I need more garage tomatoes this year. So um, here's one of them. So instead of putting in that nine inch seedling grow bag, this is Suffer Well one of Bill Yoder's Depeche Mode, brand new Depeche Mode series. This I started February 8th. This is in a one gallon grow bag for now. It'll probably, I'm hoping it will go from this to that 10 gallon grow bag where it will go in my garage and be dragged in and out and in and out. Isn't it a thing of beauty? Bill, if you're watching, suffer well. It's a beautiful, beautiful variety. I'm excited to grow it. I'm very fortunate to have seeds for this thanks to my friend, Linda, I'm not sure if you're here, Linda. Um, so I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you, I'm kind of all over the place here, but I'm I get excited about tomatoes. Imagine that. Um, so my number one most anticipated variety, if you're in the group or watch the show, it's no secret, it's this one, Calavorgien or The Virgin, by bred by M Michel Herant of France. It's a cross of black, crim, and evergreen. So I started a couple seeds, and I know many of you got seeds from like contests and all of that. Started a couple seeds, and it's supposed to be a potato leaf. I've got two plants here. Take a look. These are both Lavorgian. Whoa, it's, I'm dripping all over the place, lovely. One potato leaf here, one regular leaf. So I've got some kind of mutation which means I have to grow them both. I mean, I was planning on two anyway, but very cool, right? There's no chance of seed mix up, by the way, no chance, unless, unless it happened in, in the seed packet when it came to me, but I couldn't have mixed it up. So interesting, I've got a mutation already, makes it even more exciting. Um, what else? Let me dry off my keyboard here. Um, couple things couple other things I wanted to share with you. Let me go back here to my little handy dandy slides. If you're watching from the Facebook group, looks like everybody signed in, but make sure you have granted StreamYard permission to sign in. Oh, I have to set up the giveaway. Hang on. At the end of each episode, I give away, um, I draw a couple names and I give away some seeds. And so I'm gonna do that again. You just have to type in hashtag tomato in the comments. But let me set it up. That would be nice. 
Uh, okay. Hashtag tomato. Okay. Oh, interesting. So people have been doing it already. And even though I didn't have it set up technically, it's been registering. That's good to know. Never tried that before. So make sure um, you are signed in. It looks like so far everybody's good, even watching from the Facebook group. So let's get to some more comments. I'm seeing a lot of comments about my hair. I just got it done, like got home 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I, I was desperate, like those unnatural gray hairs were just overtaking the top of my head. I couldn't deal. And when my hair gets, I love long hair. When it gets too long, I just can't style it. It just becomes impossible. So I, I keep forgetting to call when it's, until it's like too late, like 10 o'clock at night. Called yesterday. She said, when do you want to come in? I said, ASAP. She had a spot for 1.30 today. And I said, I just have to be home by 3.30. Boom. So I get, I get like my own stylist right before the episode. But thank you. Thank you for... And the sparkles you may see, it shows up a little better when I get my hair done. I get, not from her, but from the Pennsylvania fairy hair girl, I get something called fairy hair. You can see some strands here. So I go to this girl, she dresses as a fairy with wings and all. And uh, I do it every five, four or five months or so. It lasts through cuts and color and all of that. I get so many compliments on it. So check out, don't do it yourself from Amazon. It will ruin your hair. But if you can find a fairy hair girl, you're good. Um, Luke says, love this broadcast already. I'm so glad. I have, a, I have, I do have 10 tomatoes, but I had a couple other things I wanted to talk to you guys about, but I want to get to your comments also. Who am I missing? Um, oh, Robin, thank you. Like and subscribe. Let's get Lauren to a thousand subscribers. Thank you. I always forgot forget to say that. And I kind of feel a bit weird about it too. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. Um, but um, yeah, I would appreciate it. This is this is our channel, Mr. and Mrs. Tomato Head. And um, speaking of our channel, so I've been slowly but surely uploading Micro Dwarf reviews. I've got a bunch in the can that I just haven't uploaded. One, which I filmed last week that I keep not having time to, but I will um, within the next couple of days, I hope to get to it. Heidi Dolan's uh, Gigi's Glory Multiflora Micro was the best yellow micro I have had. Uh, so far up until this point, yellow micros I found kind of bland, sometimes almost tasteless. This is a good one. So I reviewed that, but it's not up yet. So I will um, I will get that up soon. What does my shirt say? My shirt says, grown in the garden state. New Jersey's known as the garden state. I'm proud, born, raised, here um, out in farm country in western New Jersey. We raised, we wanted to um, come back and live here, Rob and I, after college and start a family and have our kids go through the same school system as we did. Um, his brother lived here also. They just moved down south recently, but so the cousins all went to school together. It's, uh, yeah, our little, little own slice of heaven. We are in the Garden State. Thanks, Luke. Hey, Luke. My hair is beautiful. Thank you. Just wait till tomorrow when I have to do it myself. It's not going to look as good. Hi, Richard. Glad you're here. Thank you all. Oh, my buddy Deb's here. Hi, Deb. So glad you guys are all here for this. Um, Ramonte, you are some one of the things I wanted to mention today um, on my list. So if you're in Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap, you may have noticed that... Um, Ramonte put a post up with, with our approval today. Ramonte worked for the World Tomato Society and um, has had to move on into, um, she's no longer with the World Tomato Society. And she is, let me tell you, when I am trying to research a tomato, I thought I was good. I thought Kina was good. Ramonte's next level. She just has access to things and just the ability to research tomatoes. So um, if you are in our group, make sure to read her post and, and talking about what um, she's able to do. She's an invaluable resource. So if you know of anybody in the tomato world that can use somebody, um, she's in Lithuania, um, but doesn't have to be in Lithuania. It can be virtual, of course. Um, she is such an invaluable resource. So let's help Ramonte get 
a job that would be incredible because her talents are being wasted. I wish I could pay her, but we don't make money. So maybe someday, but let's help Ramonte find um, a job. All right. I had a couple more things to show you. Speaking of micro dwarfs. So I want to give you guys, if you subscribe to my channel, you may have seen it. If you're in the group, I did post a link, but I want to post another link because I've been pretty vocal about like my hierarchy and what my favorite micro dwarfs are. You guys could probably recite them off the top of your head because when I like something, I'm like an evangelist. It's been Vilma, Candy Berry is top one and two. I love Tiny Totem. Those are awesome, awesome, awesome tasting um, small beef steak tomatoes on a short plant. Flavor wise, it's not quite to that Vilma Candy Berry level, but it's still a solid number three because um, of the size, it's really good flavor and it's compact. In fact, I'm using um, uh, pollen from Tiny Totem to make my own crosses now, which so I'm hoping to get larger micros on shorter plants. Um, why did I bring this? Oh, I know why. So that's been my solid one and two until Henry Harrington's bush cherry or Henry Harrington's dwarf cherry entered my life. My friend Chris from New Zealand sent me seeds for this months ago. Um, it's sold in New Zealand exclusively. There is a, um, a vendor called Sitha's Seeds, which I do believe ships at least to the UK. Um, but let me tell you, gang, and I'm going to put the link to my review in the comments. I've started seeds for all three of those favorites right now so I can do a three-way taste off because this thing is good. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. I'm intentionally letting it die off, which is so sad. Um, but it was starting to go anyway, and I need to make room under my grow lights for my larger tomatoes. So it did look much bigger and healthier. This is this is poor little Henry Harrington's dying off. The flavor, I, I wanted, I will tell you, I wanted to like it. I, I said in I wanted to like it because it's so rare and hard to find. I wanted to be the one that helped introduce seeds to the United States and all of that. But truly, like looking at it, it doesn't look like anything special. So, and it was so, so healthy. One of one of the most healthy um, micros that I've grown. So my son was filming and I wanted to get the review in while it still looked good. And if you look at the review, it still looked good. And let me tell you, I tasted it. I almost hate to taste another one because I need to save more seeds. But it, thankfully, they're really seedy. This thing is spectacular. Could very well unseat Vilma. It very well could. So I'm going to do a, a fair three-way taste off. I'm going to save this for a reason. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, so that's that. And then I wanted to show you a mutation that I've got going on. Um, I promise this won't all be about micros. But So I'm growing a variety uh, called Chubby Bunny, which um, Bunny Hop Seeds or Heritage Seed Market put out a couple of years ago. And then Ellie, who's the um, owner and breeder at Bunny Hop, she pulled it because she was um, experiencing some mutations. She does plan on re-releasing it, I believe, this fall. But Woodland, our, our friends at Woodland Creations on Etsy, and they're wonderful people, they had seeds for Chubby Bunny. So I know Ken Fry alerted me. I ordered seeds right away. I know many of you did. And so... I got chubby bunny, which is just your regular, beautiful, yellow, yellow, gold um, micro dwarf. I was in Destin, Florida for three weeks over right after Christmas. And um, Rob offered to up pot my micros for me. I had two plants of chubby bunny. I should let me preface also saying Ellie and I are friends. And she told me that one of the re one of the reasons why she pulled chubby bunny off she needed to restabilize it because she was getting some varieties with antho on them. So Rob accidentally transplanted two plants in this one bag. Let me see if I, if I can show you what's going on over here. Plant two. Can you see these? Let me try to get close. See these beauties with the antho on them? Let me get my hand out of the way. Can we see those? Can you see that? Beautiful, right? So I've got one regular over here and one with antho. So I shall be saving seeds from that and using it 
um, growing it out and, and seeing what happens. Things like this totally excite me. Just like Lavorgienne, regular leaf and potato leaf. I love excite, exciting and stabilizing things. I'm actually stabilizing. Ellie has asked me to help her stabilize a micro dwarf and a dwarf, which, which I was so honored that she asked. So I'll be doing that for her this year. All right, what else? Do, 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 do. I have um, a little gizmo that when I upload the review of um, Gigi's Glory Multiflora Micro, I'm not sure why I have forgotten to use this for all these reviews. I just got it for Christmas. This thing's called a refractometer. This, you may have seen other tomato people. I've got soil all over me already. Um, that this is used to measure sugar content in various things, juices, foods. Uh -oh. Internet. Can you guys still hear me okay? My internet thing saying, uh oh. Somebody tell me if you can hear me. No, okay. Okay, I think we're good now. Um, I don't know why it does it during the day because for Tomato Talk Live, it never does it. And I'm, I'm glad for that. But um, I'm not sure how much you guys heard. This is a refractometer. I got it for Christmas. It measures the um, sugar content in foods and juices and all of that. Ask me to get any more scientific than that. I can't tell you. But it's, it's also what's known as a BRICS scale. So you'll often see a lot of cherry tomatoes saying like this has a BRICS of 10 plus, which is really, really sweet. Um, so gosh, I've done so many micro reviews and forgetting to, that I have this thing to use this refractometer. But as a scale, like an average, so a cherry or a grape tomato averages a brick score of six to 10. A regular tomato, um, regular round or round tomato is three and a half to 5.5 bricks. So that's what's what's common. So you want to try it out? Should we try it out with Henry Harrington's? Maybe we can do two. Oh, Ramante. I'm thankful for everything. I'm crying. I'm so happy to be here to learn from you and group to know you and be part of this beautiful tomato family. Thank you for everything. You deserve it, my friend. You know, one of the many things I love about our community on TLC is that it's really, it really is a collective, it's a community, which is why a group seems um, kind of a shallow definition of what we have. You know, there's, believe it or not, there's a lot of drama in the tomato world that we will never, ever let you see in the group. We did have a blip with the purple tomato thing, and I apologize for that. But other than that, any drama that is dealt with behind the scenes, and generally it's not group stuff either, by the way. It's other outside people that, that cause the drama that we really want nothing to do with and you guys will never see it. But in TLC, we embrace all growers. Nobody has a stupid question. Perhaps it's, you know, you can answer the question. You could have answered it 30 years ago. Nobody ever makes anybody feel stupid or um, like, like it's matter of fact that you should just know this. I love our community so much. I love the people in it. You're, now I'm going to cry. Your generosity is beautiful. Um, we really are just such a, a wonderful, a wonderful sanctuary gathering place for those who love tomatoes. So I'm grateful to all of you for that and for being you, um, because we really only attract those people. Oh, Rowena, you got a refractometer too. Awesome sauce. Yeah, Santa Claus put it in my stocking. Jen, I can't believe you don't have a refractometer. It was pretty cheap for my 
my memory. I mean, well, Santa told me it was cheap. I don't know what I did to my chin here. It happened, it's like some bizarre gardening accident. If anybody can tell me the quote, where the quote bizarre gardening accident came from, I'm gonna give you a special prize. It's from a movie. Died of a bizarre gardening accident. And no Googling, that's cheating. Um, Michael, hey Michael, my refractometer is my tongue. Love to hear the actual data though. All right, let's do it quickly so I can finally get to these tomatoes, right? So I've got a couple varieties here. So this, this is one I haven't officially reviewed yet, but the, I'm letting these plants die. Um, this one's called Microbell. I did take a sneak peek and it was pretty good. Lots of fruit, right? I've got like 10 plants over there that are all looking like Henry Harrington's that I'm letting die off. Then this is called Napas 11. And then this one's Tutti Frutti Mandarin, which is supposed to be one of the sweetest, they claim, um, one of the sweetest. It's not completely ripe, but I say we give it a go. So let's use that as our baseline. So this is Tutti Frutti Mandarin. This is an F1 variety. They also have Tutti Frutti Red Berry, Cherry, Mandarin Melon, and then a couple I'm missing, which hopefully not for long. So the way it works is you put the juice on here, leave it for 30 seconds, and then you have to look through. I wish I could show you guys but you have to look through into the light. Hmm, kind of hard to read unless you're looking at direct light. And then it shows you like a scale. Gosh, I need something really light. I should put it, go in front of a grow light. Um, so yeah, let's try it out. Okay, so here's inside Tutti Frutti Mandarin. I've tasted this before. It's very good. Is it an 11 bricks? My tongue didn't really think so, but it was really good. And honestly, one of the sweetest things I'll eat during the winter. So yeah, let me show you this. So I'm putting the juice on here so it's all full. Let's get rid of the seeds. Close the lid. Wait 30 seconds. Let's get to some while we're... Ah, who... <gasps> Malachi Jen, are you a... T you're a tapper too? Oh my God, I love you even more. Yes, it is from Spinal Tap. They had a drummer who series of drummers who kept dying and one of them died in a bizarre garden accident. Oh, I love that you knew that. Special gift for you, my friend. All right, let's take a look at this. I have to go into like a grow light. Hang on. Okay, this says, this says about seven, which is good. A seven's good, right? What did it say that cherries are normally? Cherry six to ten. I will just give it that it it's not completely ripe. Yeah. It's very good. Not completely ripe. All right. I could do all of these, but I don't want to keep you guys all day. Should we do Henry Harrington's? Oh, Michelle. This is the kindest, most generous group I've ever been a part of. Thank you, Lauren and Jen and Kina. Well, those words mean more than you know. They really do. The three of us, what a gift that the three of us get to work together and steer this beautiful ship with all of you. Um, hey, Kim. Yep, I can see you. Hi there. And hi, Cheryl. Happy belated birthday, Mary. Hi, Mary, wherever you are, happy birthday. Um, Fried green tomatoes, oh, good guess. No, definitely spinal tap. Oh, God, Malachi Jen, I love that you knew that. Tap into America. All right. I'm going to try to, let me get rid of this and try to reserve as many seeds as possible because I'm like a lunatic with these Henry Harrington seeds. Although, honestly, I, I have so many seeds that I saved because they really do have a lot. Let me show, try to show you the inside. So this is what my show is about, really. Just kind of spewing about tomatoes every week. Look at all the seeds. Seeds and go. Oh, oh yes. All right, seeds go in here. Crazy person. I just want juice, no seeds. Okay, let's do it. Hmm, precious juice, no seeds. Seeds go there. Okay, wait 30 seconds. I wish I could show you guys the inside. It's uber cool. 
Um, it basically looks like a thermometer with, with some numbers on there. We are family. Hey, Cindy. Example of generosity. Cindy gave me that um, neon light back there. And I know she's gifted them to many of you, too, with various prizes. Um, uh oh, Cheryl, what do you have going on? Just restarted more seed. They are up and doing better than the last batch. Um, shoot, I, I guess I missed the comment of what's going on, but I hope they do well for you. Luckily, like I start, I said, um, I said uh, earlier, I'm, like if things go wrong for me, I still have probably a couple weeks. All right, let's look at this. Ready? Henry Harrington's Butch Cherry. Holy mackerel. This is a nine. A nine for a micro dwarf, which, spoiler alert, was my review. Nine out of ten for, for that. Ugh. Excellent. Well, now that I've squeezed all the, the good stuff out. Hmm. Great. So that's my refractometer. We'll be using this at length. Jen Joy, you need to get one of those. Or maybe I need to get you one. All right, let's get on to some tomatoes. So, ooh, get rid of this grow light. Okay. So that was fun. What do you guys think of the refractometer? I can't believe like all these videos I have reviewed since Christmas and I remember to use the refractometer once. It's crazy. Oh, Mary. Oh, my, your birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday. And yeah, you do need a refractometer. There, there were a bunch on there, but, um, you know, and I'm sure some of them may be more user friendly, but this, I don't remember how much Santa Claus paid, but it was not very expensive. Not like I would have thought. Um, it seems pretty nifty. Yeah, I agree. Super cool. Um, all right, let's get to some tomatoes. So what else did I have to share with you guys? So what the 10 that I chose today are kind of a mix, like I already said, of things I'm still, things I've either started and haven't shown you yet, like those last scragglers, or maybe things that I'm still debating if seeds should accidentally fall into soil, or trades I've gotten in recently that I think might accidentally fall into soil. Oh, Brian, refractometers look like they're between 17 and 25 on Amazon. Perfect. Perfect. Ramonte, that sounds good. I need one tomato right now, please. Here you go, Ramonte. Where is it? Here you go. If any of you are in Europe, check out Sitha's Seeds. And I put the information for that um, vendor is in my review video, which I posted. I did post a link to it. Yeah. Um, somebody, somebody on my YouTube channel said that they were able to order them from, I think, the UK. I thought um, because other places it's only New Zealand, but at least people in the UK were able to get them. And then, you know, if you're in the group, uh, they might have been drying for a week. So. We may just be giving some away as prizes and stuff. So join Tomato Lovers Collective and swap. All right, so let's get to it. This this first one I wanted to show you is one that's really bit. I have seeds have not accidentally fallen into the soil yet, and I'm not sure if they should or not. But it's still on my to grow 2024 list. This is a variety from the Ukraine, from breeder Alexi Kulik called Pisanki, which, uh, or Pisanki, which translates to Easter eggs. And I got these seeds from Tomato Galaxy many months ago, um, which is now Tomato Seta, I believe, right, Ramonte? Um, medium early tomato variety. The bunches are impressive, each with seven to eight fruits, weighing up to 80 grams. The height of the bushes is 1.6 to 1.7 meters. The fruits have a perfect presentation. Shape is elongated, elongated oval. Sometimes there are rounded flat fruits. Main color is green, along which there are red pink stripes. It's a new variety from the author and famous breeder Alexei Kulik of the Ukraine. Charming fruits, truly as if they were painted with a brush by a talented artist. 
And Tomato Eden has these as well. Not really a surprise. She has like everything. Um, tomatoeden.net, by the way, not .com. She's from Latvia. She says the plants are very powerful, densely covered with shoots, 1.5 to 1.8 meters high, high productivity. The fruits are of magnificent appearance and taste. See, this is how I can talk my way into seeds accidentally falling into soil, by just sharing all of this with you. Um, meaty, dense, sweet, ideal for canning or market for tomato paste. They last a very long time and are preserved without loss of quality. Fruits weighing 15 to 30 grams. So that description tells me right off the bat that the skin is thicker. Generally, that means long shelf life. Although I'm looking at the interior right now, it doesn't look all that thick. But usually when they start talking about long shelf life, um, good for paste and all of that, it generally means thicker skin, which I'm not usually a big fan of, but I'm, I'm getting turned around to it. Um, like we're one of the few, I guess. Well, I, I guess it's 50-50. We loved Brad's Atomic Grape a couple of years ago, which doesn't look all that different from this actually when it's ripe. Very similar as a matter of fact. Um, I know some people can't stand it. We loved it. And that had thick skin, but I felt the flavor was so complex with, with um, you know, starting off tart. And then I still remember just like a lingering sweet after we loved it. So, and then I'm growing a, but several long keepers this year, which definitely have thick skin also. So uh, I'm turning around, but generally I like the thinner skin, lots of seeds and goo. Um, Let's see, Pasanki looks like my type of tomato going on my wish list. Hey, Kathy, glad you're here. Um, yeah, Tomato Eden, uh, I think she has them in stock. Tomato Galaxy or Tomato Seta, he just recently changed the name. I think he's out of stock, but um, Tomato Eden, I'm not that I'm almost positive. Put that right in your cart. Um, hi, D. Refractometers remind me too much of work. I worked in a high fructose syrup refin refinery. Yep, I'm guessing you've seen one of those <laughs> once or twice. Um, yeah, you don't want that. But for my tomato world, look, it comes in this nifty case. Is like I'm James Bond or something. Comes in this case and it's got some directions and then it's got a little dropper. It's pretty high tech. And then the... the um, have to, gonna have to wash this off after the show, but you can like use this to focus. I wish maybe the more expensive ones have a bit of light in there so you don't have to go up to like the sun in order to read it. But um, yeah, pretty cool. Hope you guys consider getting one. Um, oh, Cheryl loved Atomic Grape too. Good. Yeah. I I know it, it's like Black Beauty. I'm, I'm of the school. I hate Black Beauty with a passion. Um, some people love it, like Kit. Kit loves it. Um, Brad's Atomic Grape seems to have that same effect on people. Um, we we really loved it. We were kind of prepared to not love it, excuse me here, um, because we were reading stuff on the like the Baker Creek site, and some people were saying, oh, how can people like this? And others were saying it was good. Um, so we were kind of preparing for the worst, but we're very pleasantly surprised. Um, Cindy, I have started Brad's Atomic Grape several times and they never produce over a couple of fruits for me. I gave up on them. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I know in the seedling straight in the seedling stage, Brad's Atomic looks sickly. Um, they have similar to ox hearts. Ox heart seedlings often look sickly and wimpy and all that. I remember that about the seedling plant, but once it got going, that thing was productive. We only grew one of them. It was very productive. Um, Samantha says, Atomic Grape has never made it into the garden five years in a row trying, always sickly and diseased for me. Are you sure, Samantha? Um, only because I've seen so many people that, that think that also, and really it just, you don't overwater it, but where it looks like it's dying, it's actually not. I would give it another try if it's not too late. Um, because I remember our we thought it was a gone or two. And then we spoke with some people um, on the Baker Creek site. And they're like, nope, that's just how it looks. Don't give up on it. So um, yeah, I think it's worth a try. But for anybody that's grown it, I think you probably agree. Pasanki Easter eggs here looks just like it. 
I think a lot of people also eat Brad's Atomic when it's not ripe enough. You have to wait until it's got red in it, just like this. Although I think these look a little bit bigger. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. That's Pisanki. So this next one is also, I found it also on Tomato Galaxy a long time ago, and they were out of stock. What's a tomato head girl to do? This is tomato head. She turns to her friend, Kina, who sends her seeds. This one's called Her Majesty Grandmother. Um, I have the the uh, Latvia name somewhere. Usually I put both names on there when I can and I don't have it, but this looks outstanding. So Tomato Galaxy, I believe, again, is out of stock. Um, I have two, two different places of information, Tomato Galaxy and Semina Tomatov.ru. My apologies for um, for the uh, brutalization of that pronunciation. Um, it says it's a variety of her own selection obtained as a result of crossing the varieties Your Majesty and the yellow pink Grandmother Vinay. Mid season variety, the fruits are heart shaped, weighing 200 to 350 grams. Very beautiful, juicy, and sweet. The height of the bush is 1.6 to 1.8 meters, and they recommend growing it, uh, double stemming it. Um, Samina Tomato V.ru said it's um, bred by Valdis Polnish of Latvia. And thank, thank you, um, Ramante, for your help with a lot of these uh, origins today. I really appreciate it. Um, Parents are yellow, pink, grandmother's Vinay, and your majesty, not stable. For me, not stable means bring it on. I want to help stabilize it. I want to see what comes out. I, where some people would be like, oh, it's not stable yet. I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. Um, what else did it say? Not stable in the experimental stage. Yay, bring it on. Indeterminate, medium, early fruits are highly flat, round, orange with red stripes on average 300 grams. Look at this thing. This one has not fallen into, did it fall into soil? No, I think it did fall into soil. It almost didn't because I'm growing something that looks almost identical that I shared with you guys already. Now I'm trying to remember what it was. It wasn't Eastside Crystal. Uh, I'd pull up my, um, spreadsheet because it's right on there, but I'm afraid of uh, the internet. I wonder if I can pull it up on here quickly. Let me see. They were like right next to each other on my spreadsheet alphabetically too. Um, well, they were until I had this written down as your majesty grandmother because that's how it translated on uh, Tomato Galaxy, but it really translates from what I understand to her majesty's grandmother. All right. Let's see here. What was it similar to? Oh, I know. Zalato Kakasi or Gold of Kakaxia, um, which I received from my Jarson Angel. I don't know if you guys can, let me see if I can pull this up. This is very high tech, not, but if you guys can see my spreadsheet here, it was this one. They were like right next to each other. And I'm like, oh gosh, they look the same. But, you know, alas, just because they look the same, doesn't mean they're going to taste the same. So I feel like based on all the information I just gave you guys with experimental and not stable and look at it, <laughs> um, I, I'm going to grow this out. I have to, I have to. By the way, for those of you wondering, I did get Mr. Tomato Head's confirmation, not for a greenhouse, but for two more raised beds. That's 32 more varieties. Not that I wouldn't have grown them anyway. They would have been in grow bags, but yay. He gave me two last year in addition to our in-ground bed. So slowly taking over the yard, slowly taking over the property. So anyway, that's Her Majesty's Grandmother. If anybody's grown any of these, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, Kinas, there's my, my buddy. I have two Her Majesty Grandmothers going now. I think I do too. For some reason, I did initially hold off, and then I realized that was stupid. 
um, Amanda's here. Hi, Amanda. Sorry, I'm late. Crazy household. No worries. No worries. Um, sniper cat. I thought Brad's was later as well. Definitely longer than the amount of days stated I found online. Absolutely. That was like watching paint dry, waiting for that to ripen. Absolutely. And I think that's why a lot of people taste it when it's not ripe enough, because it's like, how do you tell when it's ripe? It's so many different colors, just like that Pisanki or Easter eggs, so many different colors, but you really have to wait for that red to come in. And um, you can kind of, kind of tell by squeeze too, but it really, it's that red and it makes all the difference because it just doesn't, I don't think, just doesn't taste very good when it's not ripe. Um, that one that looks like a peach, maybe that one too. That was something different. Now I don't remember um, which one that was either, but yeah, that was, looks good too. Good. I was hoping Ramonte would answer this. Cheryl Wilson, tomato galaxy or tomato seta. Valdin's Pulins from Latvia, which I, that was his, um, this is his tomato, which Ramonte kind of brought to my attention today when I was asking her about um, the origin of this breeder, Valdis Polnish. She told me Latvia, and then we got into the talk about Tomato Galaxy, and then she told me that they changed names, which I sort of knew from Googling, but I thought the other one had come first, and now it's Tomato Galaxy. So see how valuable Vermonte is? She would make an incredible employee for somebody in looking for a tomato professional, for sure. All right, let's get back to it. What, what's next? Um, did I get everything? Yeah. Okay. This is going to come as a shock to many of you. It's a Jarson. <laughs> I don't know how many Jarsons I'm up to sharing. Um, some of them are so obscure that there aren't even photos available to my knowledge, but this isn't one of them. This is Jarson 26 version two, version one. And a lot of the Jarsons are like that, not exactly stable. Um, but I like that. I like that. The cross of this is Kazula 24 and Kazula 125. This is by my favorite breeder. Jarson um, is the name he goes by. His tomato breeding name. You guys may have seen a couple weeks ago. He emailed me. We were emailing back and forth. It was very exciting. He's from Poland. And I love him because he breeds with what I feel are some of the most extraordinary tomatoes out there in the tomato world. Things like Malachite Box. Cherokee purple, Anana Noir, um, Kazula is like this. So I wanted to take this a step further and show you what Kazula 24 and Kazula 125 look like. First, let me tell you that Kazula 24 is um, bred with pink FF and copia, which is a very large tomato. And then Kazula 125 is black, known as black raspberry zebra. So here's what they look like. So these two were crossed to create Jarson 26 version two, version one. Um, the Kazula 24 is my photo from last year. We grew that, that variety, it's a very good variety, very good variety, very productive, very sweet. We liked it a lot. Haven't grown Kazula 125 yet. That photo is from Tomato Fifu. So that's really all I know. I was given seeds for this by my Jarson Angel in Poland. Thank you, Jarson Angel. Um, tomato Fifu says fruits weigh 100 to 180 grams, round with more or less rounded shoulders. Skin is variegated with purple green stripes. Thick skin, mm, uh oh, juicy and fleshy flesh. Juicy and fleshy flesh. When is a flesh not fleshy? I wonder. Fleshy flesh. Okay. Um, sweet and sour flavor. Sweet and sour mixture. Okay, vigorous plant with great development, abundant regular foliage, indeterminate growth, late mid-season production, 85 to 90 days, good disease resistance, easy to grow. I believe that because uh, Kazula 24 had tremendous disease resistance. Um, really was like a powerhouse. So, so that's Jarson 26, version two, version one. Um, two Kazula equals a Jarson. Well, in this case they do. Um, when, um, he's going down, so there are 35 Jarson crosses at this time. 
original crosses and then a million different variants out there of like Jarson 18 has a billion little exaggeration, but a lot of different variants out there. Um, so in the later, as, as you get into like the mid to late twenties to 35, he starts using a lot, a lot of Kazulas. Um, actually I shouldn't say that. That's a lie because my Jarson one tricolor is great white and Kazula one twenty. You know, I know these things off the top of my head. And then when I think about it, I hesitate. Great white. I think in Kazula 125. I don't know. Now I'm doubting it. So, and don't listen to me. It's not the later crosses because it started with one. Don't listen to this girl. All I know is that it was a fantastic tomato. <laughs> and I know many of you are growing it this year. So I hope you agree. Um, very pretty. Very pretty, says Linda. Tomato math. <laughs> I like that, Cheryl. <laughs> um, Missy says, it looks like a Christmas ornament. Very pretty. Yes, I agree. Sniper Cat, I hope you share pictures and hopefully taste tests of all the Jarsons you are growing this year. Oh, my friend, have no fear. Have no fear. Um, that Jarson is beautiful. I agree. And is there an official number on how many Jarsons there are? Yes and no. Here's the thing, because they were, my, my understanding of the story is that they were never even all officially released. Like he gave some to friends and I don't know that he, that Jarson um, said, okay, here's Jarson 15, go out into the world. So what happens is they're not stable. I think the only stable one that I know of is Jarson 18.3. Um, but there's like a billion other jars and 18s. So one through 35, the actual crosses, that is the official number of crosses, but the variants I find out, I find about more every week. Um, if you look in TLC in our guides section, there's a guides button at the top of the page. Kina, Jen, and I have put together all these tremendous resource sheets, including breeder resource sheets. I have a micro mini dwarf database in there. That's an ongoing thing. We've got a Kazula cross list. And then I've put a Jarson cross list up there also. And I had started putting in links to the, the variants that I found. And it's like endless. I kind of had to give up because there's so many different looks to them. But I find that that's what makes them fantastic and special. Um, so I love that like my Jarson one tricolor looks very different from other Jarson ones that I've seen. Or Kina grew a Jarson 18, it was supposed to be 18.3, I think last year, but she got, it's supposed to be green and yellowish stripes, um, which is what mine was, but she got like a, a red striped variant that she's now giving out. So, um, you know, you just never know. You just never know. Um, 179 was stable for me. I think you're probably thinking of Kazula, Samantha, because Jarsons only go up to 35. Um, Kazulas, I believe most, I shouldn't say most, a lot of them are very stable. Um, I'm actually growing out a couple of varieties to help stabilize with um, Heidi Dolan this year, which is exciting. But um, yeah, there isn't a Jarson 179 yet. I hope there is. My new BFF, Jarson. I'm um, not sure if he wants his real name out there or not, but I'm going to say, come on, buddy. Let's get some more crosses going. Um, Kazula, I keep getting autocorrected. Oh, no, no worries. It didn't say what you were talking about, whether it was Jar it what didn't correct you to Jarson. I just assumed that's what you were talking about when, because we were talking about um, official Jarsons out there. Yeah. So to answer your question, Hannah. It's endless. It's an endless array, a cornucopia of different Jarsons. And if you're on Team Jarson Grow Out, let's hear it from you out there. My Team Jarson, I keep saying I need to put out more verbiage for everybody. Not much to say, but I, I really do need to get on the ball. So hopefully you guys have your variety started if it's time for you to start. If it's not, no biggie. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully everything's germinated okay. I know I've I've heard from a few of you that had germination issues with whatever grow out you were in. Hopefully I steered you in the right direction. So that's Jarson 2621. 
what's next? Oh, yeah. This one makes me think of you, Deb, if you're still out there, because I think we both oohed and odd over this one. I'm pretty sure this has not fallen into soil yet, but after posting this here, I think it's after the show, I think it's going to. Mystic Mustard. O-M-G. Look at that seeds and goo. Look at the seeds and goo. I missed a comment up somewhere, by the way, um, that said they also like the seeds and goo. I forget who said it, but I'm with you, sister. Can you post where to buy the 9 by 9 grow bags? I sure can, Maria. Um, let me, I can pull it up easily. Hope I won't lose internet right now, but I, I'm afraid I will forget. So let me do this. Um, there are several different companies that do it. Mine that we've done the last couple of years. And I got this idea, by the way, from my friend, Pat Rakes, who's in the group. Uh oh. All right. Let's try something else. Nine inch grip bags. I saw him doing it several years ago and I'm like, what are these? Nine inch seedling grow bags. So they're dev they're from Amazon. They're 9.1 by 9.1. I'm not seeing my brand all of a sudden. It's not coming up in my former orders. I thought the I thought it was by a company called B A L I K. Um, let's try this. See what happens. Well, I may as well show you guys what I'm doing if you're going to sit here for this. Okay. Pull this up. Let me try my... I could pull up, pull up my orders again, but then you're going to be like, what the heck is this girl ordering? Um, let's try seedling grow bag. There we go. Oh, name was wrong. Belit. This is... the showing? Yes. This is the company... Um, so I get there's a couple different sizes. I've gotten the smaller ones, like the six inch ones for some micro dwarfs before. Kind of mixed reviews on using them for micro dwarfs for me. Um, but let me send you the link. And so I use the 9.1 inch by 9.3 inch. Get link, copy. And let me show you again what those look like. I tell you, for me, um, for up potting, it's the perfect size to go from solo cups or those 3.3 uh, 3 .3 by 3.3 .3 inch bootstrap farmer cups. This, it's great. Downfall, it holds a lot of soil, a lot of soil. It's like endless. You think it's up to the top and like, oh, it needs more. So if you're using expensive potting soil, it can be pricey. So that, that was part of the reason why we wanted to hold off starting our seedlings this year because we give away a lot too. So I'm giving seedlings that look like this to people. No joke. No joke. If you guys watch my videos from last year, you see that all of my seedlings look like this. We're giving them in this with this gold potting soil. So it gets a bit pricey. So, and even more proud of myself, we didn't start the plants we're giving away until three days ago. Score. I'm, I'm so proud of myself. These are big wins. You guys, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get back to Mystic Mustard. Did I post the link? I didn't post the link after all that. Silly. Okay. Here is the link. Um, what would be the size for giving away seedlings? Ideally, I would love them if they were still in the solo cup. Um, so, you know, th this one's, this one's too big and I won't give anything away, of course, in the bootstrap farmers, this one got leggy, but I'm using it for an experiment. So, you know, if it, if it can still easily be contained in a solo cup, it's a little smaller than this, that would be the ideal. That would be the ideal and be like, here you go. Here's some really great varieties, free of charge. Take them, take them, take them. Um, but I have to admit, there's a really big kick when people are like, oh, look at this. It's like a tree. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, we did that. We did that. Um, oh, uh oh, Rowena, SOS. We just started getting some hail. Good thing it's too early to have anything outside. <gasps> yes, I know. Thank goodness. 
gosh, some that happened to somebody last year, a member of our group. I think I know who it is, but I, I'd rather not guess because I'm not 100% positive. But she lost like everything to a hailstorm. It was awful. But the tomato community really rose up and, um, you know, gave her seedlings and stuff. I think it was kind of early in the season too, but I, I want to say she was down south. So um, she had stuff planted out earlier than me, but yeah, it was, it's heartbreaking to see that, you know, you, you plant seeds in, you know, whatever your version, oh, my little gratitude thing fell down in like, whatever your version of good soil, the best soil, you nurture them, you water them, you, you have them on a heat mat, you give them light, you, you talk to them, you nurture them, you watch them grow. They, they look fantastic like my suffer well. And then you get them outside, like the frost took a couple of mine last season. And then boom, you know, we're at the mercy of mother nature. It's just, it's humbling, isn't it? It's humbling. Um, Haley. Hi, Haley. Glad you're here. The hail ruined a bunch of my gorgeous ceramic pots one year, but surprisingly the tomato survived. It was so bizarre. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, tomatoes are so resilient, aren't they? They really are. They're just so resilient. It's crazy. I took, I took a couple of suckers off of this Henry Harrington's. First of all, I took some seeds right out of a tomato, put it right into soil and they, they, all four of them germinated right away because I'm not waiting to grow more of these. But I also took a couple suckers, put it, put one in soil, one in water because I like to see the roots grow. And uh, it's just tomatoes are just amazing. They're just amazing. I just, you may or may not know, I love tomatoes. I just do. If you guys are joining us late, make sure you type in hashtag tomato. I'm going to give away some seeds at the end of the show. Um, I am behind on on prizes, I know, but. You guys will prob probably also know I'm getting there. Many of you are getting private messages from me saying that they're going out. I haven't forgotten you. I have more of these notebooks than you can imagine. I write every single one down. But if you can just bear with me, and, and like I say every episode, if you win something that you really want to get in for this season, just let me know, and I can put you to the, you know, move you to the top. But um, if you can wait a couple weeks, that would help me out a lot. I, I don't want to stop giving away prizes just because I'm behind. I'd like to continue going on. And I do try to get to between five to 10 a day. Um, although this today I haven't yet, but, um, oh, Amanda, my toddler threw all my pepper seedlings. My dog's tail knocked over a tray of my dwarf seedlings. And then my son kicked all my micro and micros and water over. It's been a rough start. Oh, those toddlers, those toddlers. Um, Hi to Eli if he's watching. And hi to our new friend Ansel. I don't know if Ansel or his dad are watching, but hi, Ansel. He's our new little mascot, our new little buddy. Um, not sure if he's watching, but if he's not watching now, I know he's watching the recording. So we love you, Ansel. Um, hey, my favorite name on all of YouTube, Harley of the Swamp Bitch. We had a tornado hit 30 minutes away from me, Louisiana, two days ago. I was so thankful we were in the clear. I worked too hard for these babies. I'm so glad too, Harley. Yeah. So, so glad. Um, like I said, we're at the mercy of mother nature. Last week we had our earthquake in New Jersey. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, Sasha, Sasha randomly kids and animals are cute. So you don't kill them. True story. True story. <laughs> and I feel like a toddler. Sometimes I keep pushing things over. Let me show you something. <laughs> you know, this is what I talk about when I say there are no experts in the tomato world because I have just as many. Okay, kick myself out of the broadcast. Um, I have as many epic fails today as I did 30 years ago. Um, Oh, it wasn't just you. I lost myself. I kicked myself out somehow. So this isn't tomatoes, but I, I've i been behind on my, my lettuces and kale and stuff. So I planted them all a couple days ago. And, you know, these seeds are small and I labeled them all because I wanted to do different ones. You can see some empty pockets here towards the front. And I better not do this because I'm going to have another epic fail. I like tripped over the corner of the deck 
box and there's like this whole row and there's probably 16 plants, seeds that are psh, clutch. I'm like a toddler too, but that's okay because it's all very humbling. I think we can all humble ourselves and nobody's an expert because we're all just human, beautiful, living, breathing, tomato head humans. And that's okay. That's a good thing. All right. Let me get my slides back because everything was kicked off. Because speaking of being a klutz, I kicked myself out of the episode. I hadn't done that in a while. And I don't know what I press. But it's something. All right. Let's get rid of this. Okay. What are we up to? See how I get sidetracked? We still haven't talked about Mystic Mustard. Let's talk about Mystic Mustard. Um, it's Tomato Eden is where I got the seeds. Deb, I'm pretty sure you're growing this too, if you're still there, right? Um, TomatoEden.net. It's a new variety by Sile Sigsgard. And thanks to Ramante, um, she found that she is from Denmark. I guessed Sweden or Norway. She said Denmark. So thank you, Ramante. Those skills, those, those are big time skills. I appreciate that. So um, uh, Tatiana at Tomato Eden says, uh, height of the bush is 1.4 meters. The fruits weigh 110 to 200 grams. Very tasty. The pulp is translucent. Gang. Tell me the pulp is translucent, translucent, and I'm all in. I am all in. Um, and then she says, like marmalade. Oh, now Tatiana's not one to go on and on about varieties. So when she says something good, I take, I take note of it. Um, so she, you know, because often she's just she states the facts, but when she says something's really good or like marmalade, oh. I love that. So this hadn't fall, felt this had not fallen into soil, but will promptly fall into soil accidentally after this episode. Um, yeah, feel free if you don't know if you hashtagged, you can do it more than once. It will only register you once, but better be safe than sorry. Let me see who's we've got 70 entries so far. So that's great. <clears throat> and I think we're up to 76 at one point. So that's really good. Um, ah, there's that, but yes, I am growing mystic mustard. Yes. Doesn't it look good? Um, green thumb gardener. I just mix the seeds and sprinkle. Yeah. I, um, I do that sometimes too. I grow, I don't have any down here at the moment. So I grow lettuce indoors in the winter. Didn't so much this winter cause I went a little micro crazy, but I have, you know, those rub, the gray rubber made, um, what do you call them? Boxes, I guess. Like what what um, bus boys and girls use to bus tables. They're like a bin, Rubbermaid bin, about this big. I take two of those, um, drill holes in the top one for drainage, and then put that underneath one without holes in it. Fill it with my beloved Fox Farm, and then I grow lettuce in there. Um, really big heads. Someday I'll do an episode on it, um, or at least or at least a, a YouTube video on it. It's great having lettuce and salads all year round, but that's I sprinkle in that case too. But this time I want to I want to put some heads in my green stock and some my railing planters and all that. And there are there are certain varieties I really like and some that grow differently, um, like some that are more romaine, some are heading, some are butter crunch. So this time I did not. I wish I had though, because that would have been a lot less painful. And I've got some. Um, um, Radicchio from Italy in there. And guess what I lost most of the radicchio. Um, Deb says, Mystic Mustard. I bought it because of the description marmalade. Yes, yes. I think I saw Kina. Kina, Mystic Mustard. I had a thing with that one I and ordered it like three to four times because every time I saw it, I was, ooh, I need that. I just needed it more than I needed it. Guess what, sister friend? That is one of the varieties I am giving away today, giving an option of today, because I did the same thing. Same thing. I mean, really, Lauren, if it's a green, 
first of all, chances are you have it. Second of all, you have a database. Look at it. Um, and even if it's not like officially logged, it's listed at the bottom of the things you've ordered and haven't logged yet. There's really no excuse. Either that or I was just like, oh, I need to give these out to a lot of people. Whatever the case, if you are a winner today, that will be one of your choices, Mystic Mustard. Um, and from what I can tell, nobody else has it. Oh, wait, I think I saw Samantha say something. Hang on. Did you say other than Tomato Eden? I thought I saw. Maybe not. Oh, here it is. Tom Ado has them well, I has them as well, I believe. Thanks, Samantha. Um, if you haven't hooked up with him yet, he's in our group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. Um, we would love to have you join us, join our community. There's nothing to be afraid of at all. We uh while I may be sharing varieties that aren't familiar to you, do not let this sway you and make you think that we are all a bunch of tomato snobs because we are not. Um, I just like to have a little fun and grow things that are unique and rare, but you know, we, we um, really run the gamut. We're at three, 3,400 or something members now, and we welcome growers of all, all types, whether you grow hybrids, whether you grow, <clears throat> excuse me, if whether you're breeding your own, whether you um, you know are starting from seed your first time or you've been doing it for decades, we are the place for you, trust me. All right, that's it on Mystic Mustard. This next one, I don't really know how I haven't shared it yet because this has been on the grow list from the beginning. Rusted Soul, Rusted Soul. These also came from Tomato Galaxy um, because of Gen Joy. Jen Joy did a review on this, and I forget her words exactly, but she said it was extraordinary. And so from that moment on, it was on my wish list. I can't find this one listed anywhere else either. I know it's from Latvia. Vermonte, if you're still here and you have any more information on Rusted Soul, please um, feel free. Oh, wait, I did find something else on Rusted Soul. Did I? I think it's on that on my spreadsheet. Maybe it just didn't make it to my thingy. Hang on. Let me see. It wasn't much though. It was just like, just the facts. Hang on. And facts are good. But all you really need to know is that Jen Joy loved it. So, and look at the, the color. The color really sells me a lot. And this color is really just gorgeous. Um, rusted soul, rusted soul. Rusted soul, rusted soul. Okay, yep, I have a little more. Mid-season, regular leaf, indeterminate, 1.7 to 1.8 meters high. Fruits are large, 150 to 350 grams. Fruit colors, green, brown, red. I sure wish I saw an inside shot of this, but I will because I'm growing it. I am growing it, rusted soul. Um Hannah, I'm growing the seeds you gave me and they look healthy so far. I'm so glad. This was another one. I ordered a bunch of packets when Tomato Galaxy first opened for the season and they stocked them. I, I ordered like five packets because I wanted to give them out because I saw they were the only place I could tell that had them and I knew they would sell out quickly because of Gen Joy. Um, Sniper Cat, I'm so looking forward to Rusted Soul this year. Me too. Thank you, Jen, for all the reviews you do for all of us. Um, I can't watch all of your videos. I want to, I get, I catch the ones that I can, um, and I love them and you are very influential in the tomato world. And it's an honor to be your partner in tomato talk live. Um, D I'm growing rusted soul in all of Jen's top 25. See what I'm saying? This wasn't even planned. That's the influence you have. My friend, that is the influence you have. Same with Kina, honestly. Kina says she likes something. I'm like, sold. She and I have very similar tastes in tomatoes. Our wish list, our, our grow list this year have a lot of similarities. Um, it's all about flavor. It's all about color. It's all about rarity, unique um, Jarsons. Jarson Angel um, found me, and then I told her about Kina, and she gifted her the same ones. I mean, she really is an angel. So um, oh, there she is. There's our girl. There's our girl. Influential. 
Yes, you are. I haven't announced it in the group yet because I just keep forgetting, but I'm just remembering now. Jen has been asked to speak at a local master gardeners um, meeting um, somewhere in, in Maryland, I believe. And I said I was going to announce it and forgot in the group, I mean. So congratulations to Jen. Very well deserved. Um, and you can do this. You are you are going to be just fine and great. You're live this week. By the way, if you guys are around Saturday morning, Jen is doing another up potting video, I think at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I was able to tune in last Saturday. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You can just watch Jen up pot and talk about tomatoes. I could. I could for hours. Um, look, congrats coming in for Jen. Congratulations, says Kathy. Green Thumb Gardener. Olivia's here. Hi, Olivia. Nicole Smith, woohoo, Jen, that's awesome. Jen is our number one tomato influencer. I won't take offense to that, don't worry. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, she's wonderful. She's wonderful. Um, Deb says, yay, Jen, congrats. How exciting. Attendees are in for a real treat. I agree. I agree. Sniper Cat says, yay, Jen, my happy place. Congrats, Jen. Yes, very well deserved. Very well deserved. Oh, Jen Joy, I just had to go and wash my hands so I could type, you are so, so sweet. Thank you for all your lovely words, my dear friend. Well deserved. Well deserved. I love you. You know that it's an honor to work with you and Kina to do this show with you and just share our tomato love and passion with everybody. It really is an honor. Um, okay, what's next? Oh, I gotta get moving. What are we? We're at an hour seventeen. It's not terrible. Okay, we got another Jarson. Jarson twenty two. This one looks amazing. Uh oh, here comes Rory the Wonder Cat. She's decided she now needs three meals a day instead of just breakfast and lunch. I'm not sure where this decision came in, but right now she's smelling the plants on the floor. I guarantee you, she will um, start screaming any moment. Um, Jarson 22 are seeds I got from Cariarti, Cariarti, um, and uh, they look amazing. It's a cross between Coastrali and Ananas Noir, and to see what those look like, here they are. Coastrali, this photo is taken from Tomato Fest. It's a round uh, red French heirloom. Ananas Noir is otherwise known as black pineapple. Those are my photos from a couple of years ago. So those were bred to create this baby. Looking fantastic. It looks big, very big. Um, yeah, Rory. I wonder if she'll she'll come on. Rory, do you want to come on? Hang on, let's get her. Let's get her. Let's torture her. When I used to do a broadcast for my show and my with my gratitude group years ago. I think I've shared this before. She would like chew her way through the external webcam, the cord. I went through like three cameras. Excuse me. Stop scratching the carpet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come here. Come here. Nope. So she's pulling this little game. I get up. I walk towards her. She like leads me upstairs to the food. So catching her may not be, may not be uh, reality, but we'll see. Um, hi, Alex. Don't sell yourself short, Lauren. You popularized Jarson tomatoes in the U.S. in the U.S. so much that the breeder actually contacted you. You are making big waves. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, oh man, that looks dark, good dark red. I know, doesn't it? This is the thing with Jarsons. Like, um, hi, Brianna. By the way, glad you're here. Welcome. Um, there's the Jarson crosses are just epic. And like, then like with Jarson 16, right? Cherokee purple and Maliki Dovayash Gatulka, my favorite tomato. I think I've got four or five different variants, maybe more. And I had to grow them all because they look different. I mean, how could they be bad? So, so this is my problem with growing so many Jarsons. It's not really, it's a good problem to have, but this one really looked outstanding. Um, so yeah, I love the internal color. The internal color to me says a lot too. Um, aw, you are also sweet. I'm about to cry. We love you, Jen. 
um, D says, Lauren, Jen, and Kina are all rock stars in my tomato world. Thanks, D. Kina is a rock star. I will tell you that for sure. Lori's a rascal. She is. And now she's sitting at the top of the stairs like, I thought you were coming. No, nope. doing a show. Sorry. Malin, I'm so impressed every time you pronounce that, Ms. Lauren. Thank you. However, <laughs> we had Alex from Alexander Schumas from the Lucky Garden channel on our January show, I think. And I asked him how, how well I did pronouncing it. And he said, not very well. <laughs> so while it may sound good, it, it's not correct. And I forget what he says now, but I'll just keep going with Malachita Vyashkatulka. And I will also tell you that I called it Malachite Box almost exclusively until Malachite Gen. I knew it was Malachita Vyashkatulka. I just thought I looked at that word, word those two words, and I'm like, uh-uh. But she kept referring to it as that, so she's turned me around. Okay. That's Jarson 22. Anything else to say about that? Did I say anything about it? Let me tell you about the crosses, which I know I showed you already. So Kowalstra Lee, French heirloom, like I said, and the seeds were obtained by Craig Lehoulier and Carolyn Mail from Norbert Pariera of Helmer, France in 1992. Um, yeah. Old fashioned tomato -y flavor. So I swear Craig has his hands in the entire tomato world. So it's those two that create this. I can't wait to see what my version looks like because you just never know it's Arson's, but it will be great. All right, what's next? Hi, Ro. Jarson 22 added to ever growing wish list. Ah. I'm glad I can be a part of that ever-growing wish list. Um, oh, good, Kelly. I'm excited that my Jarson one has germinated. Thanks, Lauren. You're very welcome. I hope, you know, I've been telling you guys this is what it, mine look like. And I hope yours looks the same. Maybe it won't. I hope it does. It's the most majestic and beautiful tomato I've ever grown. By far. By far. Um Sniper cat, I'm growing at least five tomatoes from your videos or group posts. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Karen adds Jarson 22 to 2025 grow wish list. All right, fess up, gang. Who's got a 2025 wish list already? Say in the comments. Um, oh, good idea. Just put lasagna in the oven, and these jumbo ricotta containers are becoming tomato pots. Good idea. I, I do that a lot with things that I use um, around the house. Like, ooh, I could use this sarcale in like mushroom containers. Oh, I could sarcale seeds in there. Um, Amanda, seriously, how Lauren, Jen, and Kina feel around breeders is how we all feel when we get to talk to you all. Oh, thanks, Amanda. I love talking to you all. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. That was a nice thing to say. Thank you, Amanda. Um, yep. 2025 list started, says Nicole Smith, because of you and Jen. Thanks, Nicole. Oops. Haley says, I'm too scared to start a 2025 wish list because it will get changed way too many times. Well, my 2024 grow list is changing way too many times. Um, Shannon says, just maybe I do a 2025 wish list. And Brian, I have a 25 wish list that you contribute to every week, Lauren. Well, I'm glad. Yay, Mr. Tomato had more raised beds, birdies. No, I think he's going to do, um, he built me uh, wood framed ones last year, which I think we're going to go for again. But hey, I'll be open to more birdies beds too. We got three of those. I'd be open. Oh, actually, we got two birdies. What's the other one, Jen? Starts with a V. We got two birdies and then the, the other one that starts with a V that you told me about the coupon code for last year. I forget. The two big companies. I'll be open to those, but no, I, um, in ground beds, um, with, uh, surrounded by, by, uh, wood. I can't talk all of a sudden. Bad timing doing a live broadcast. All right. This next one, I'm not sure if it's accidentally falling into soil or not, 
This is from a trade I just got this week. Not even a trade. She granted me my most wanted in, in our group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. We have a post, an ongoing post called Most Wanted. And you're allowed to have one variety up there at all times for your most wanted tomato. And when and if it's found, and hopefully it's found, um, you get to remove that. Somebody finds it for you, grants it for you in a wish or tells you where you can buy it. And then you can put up a brand new one. So yes, Vigo beds. Thank you, Cheryl. That's it. I have one of those. Or Vigo. Yes, Vigo. <gasps> Just on sale again too. My mother got four. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Samantha says, I have four birdies as well. They're nice, huh? They're really nice. I think, yep, you're right, Jen. Vigo. Vigo. Um, V-E-G-O, I think. Um, I have to go back out and determine. I think I like the birdies a little better, but the Vigo beds have a lot more options, I think. And I ordered the birdies beds through um, Epic Gardening. Kevin, I think he's the exclusive um, retailer for them here in the United States. They're from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. They're really nice quality. They're really nice quality. Um, okay, next one. So these I got from um, a member in a, from my most wanted. This is called Lost Marbles and breeders Phil Seneca, who I currently have another one of his on my most wanted now, and it, it's been up there for a couple weeks. Um, it's a tough one. So Prince Charming's Bastard. I forgot to do a most wanted of the week for this week. I said last week I was going to do that every week and I because I was getting my hair done. Didn't get a chance to do that that post this week. But let's just say it's still Prince Charming's Bastard that I'm looking for. Same breeder. He's no he has a website called Good Mind Seeds that I think he shut down in 2016-2017. Um I've tried to reach out to him personally. I, I think there some there was some drama there from what I understand. I don't know any of the details other than I really like some of the stuff he says he bred. Um, so this one's called Lost Marbles. And what I know, this is from Tomato Fifu, created by Phil Seneca. Um, he's from the United States, from Pittsburgh, I think. Result of various crosses making it particularly resistant to diseases such as septoria, mildew, and fusarium. Small fruit weighing about 15 grams, a large round purple dark pink cherry, cluster of a dozen fruits joined together in the shape of a fish bone, juicy dark purple fresh, sustained flavor. That's important to me. A lot of varieties seem to taste good in the beginning and then they get watery on the back end. I like full flavor. That's what Henry Harrington's has that a lot of micros don't. Also what Candy Berry has and Vilma has. Um, in my opinion. Plant with great development, regular foliage, indeterminate mid-season, and then so true seeds, which is um, where Cheryl, the member who gave me these, got them from, says these lark, large pink cherries are so incredibly delicious, so sweet. They were really a standout in trials, very disease resistant too. These plants have been known to fruit reliably into October here in zone 6B. Our original seed stock came from Good Mind Seeds in Pennsylvania, who says, who says this variety was selected from multiple species of wild tomatoes, explaining their excellent blight resistance. Indeterminate. So that's Lost Marbles. Yes, you hit the nail on the head, Brianna. The green goo is so attractive. See, now you're going to make me accidentally fall this, have this fall into soil. Green goo. I love seeds and goo. If it's green, ugh. It looks so good. Look at that. That gloss on the outside reminds me of Candy Berry Micro. Those had like a, such a sheen on it. Actually, as, as do um, the Jarson One Tricolors that I grew. They had a really shiny look to them also. Those, those ended at a point at the bottom. Just spectacular. Um, the color says, Sasha, I know. I know. Um, you're right. Bro, it's neat how the in outside is red and the inside is green like a jawbreaker. I love that. I love that. Um, Samantha says, this was on my gr my want list and Sherry got it for me for next year. So excited. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. I, I feel like I have so many cherries that 
I probably shouldn't let them fall on the soil. Ugh, this is the stress. I think I just have to cancel my show altogether. I just can't do it. I can't do it. I talk myself. You guys talk me into it. I know. I talk you into it. Um, yes, Birdies is Australian. I don't know what Vigo. Vigo, I think, is in the United States, but uh, Birdies is Australian. Um, and Kevin from Epic Gardening is the distributor for the here Birdies here in the United States. Malachi Jan Green Goo, yummy. I agree. I agree. Ben just walked in the house. He wants me to tell you. He says, hello. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Ben's doing some great things for Jen and I. I'm not, I didn't check Messenger before I came on. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say Jen, but I think you may have said in your Saturday show. Um Luke says, I will try the green version this year. What's the green version, Luke? Is there a green version of Lost Marbles? Do tell. Amanda, a green go always makes me think I cut it too soon. It can, that can mean that, like, like here inside this tutti fruity mandarin, which when they're very ripe, they're very um, orange. Some green go in there. Mm, still good, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The temptation's intense, it is. Especially this time of the season, right? I don't know if you guys feel it with me, but maybe you've started your seeds already. Your plants are looking good. You know, they're started. You've got some good looking seedlings. Um, and you can, you know, you've chosen your varieties and you go through what you're growing, see the pictures and all that. And you can just taste the tomatoes, right? You can just taste it. And so keeping a very flexible grow list at this point of the season is dangerous because, you know, I cut off it. I said I wanted to get down to 120. That never happened. We were at like 150. Now, if I keep if things keep accidentally falling into soil, and I already know this is going to happen, I'm going to things I've already started. I'm going to have to say no to. How do I do that? That's a whole other process. You guys don't want to hang out with me. This is like very enabling, very, very. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Destructive behavior for any tomato head. Don't watch. Turn off right now. Don't do it. <laughs> Cindy, I look at all my little seedlings and I just wonder what on earth I was I thinking. I know, I know. <laughs> um, Luke says, I've grown lost marbles in 2022. Very sweet. This year, the green version. I didn't, I haven't seen a green version. You have to send me a link for that. I I uh would have thought I would know about that. Do send a link. I'd be interested in that. Oh, Ramonta, yes, you can find Lost Marbles Green Version found by Mary Hope. They are so tasty. Well, what the heck am I thinking about this one for? Send me the green. <laughs> I need it. Um, Amanda, I signed up for a new 83-day meditation course. I will learn self-control. I was kidding about that, by the way, to Ramonta and Luke. Don't send it to me, but thank you. I'm excited to know there's a green one. Um that's good, Amanda. I need to do the same for sure. And I do meditate every afternoon, but clearly I need to do it sooner than when I'm planning the show for sure. <laughs> oh, Luke, I was only teasing. You don't have to send me seeds, my friend. You've been so generous already. Thank you. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. This is a trade I just got in last week um, from my friend Melly from Hungary. Verte de Hue um, from Belgium. These photos are from Vertilum. It's an old and rare variety native to the region Hue in Belgium. These have also not fallen into soil. I may restrict self-control, but we'll see when I'm done reading the info. Let's see. Fruit from 150 to 300 grams, round, discreet, cotillage, the top. Green skin covering, amber when ripe, sometimes with a light pink blush on the blossom end, collar remains green. Sometimes the translations from like 
French to English, a little intermeshed there. Greenish yellow flesh, juicy and sweet aromatic flavor, moderate development and determinate type, not exceeding 1.3 meters to four feet. Very productive starting from mid season. Um, tomato Fifu says green color with amber at maturity. They basically say the same thing. Tendency to have circular cracking. Who cares? It looks good. I love the little pink blush in the inner core. I love the coloring of this. I'm growing, I'm growing so many greens. I probably can't do it for this year, but this one, Melly, um, from Hungary, thank you for, for all the seeds, by the way. Um, this is going on the, the wish list for next year, for sure. For sure. Thank you for sending these, these to me. Um, hi, Wendy. Glad you're here. That tomato looks awesome. I agree. Oh, Ramonte, you don't have to. You're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why do I not know of this Lost Marbles Green? Why do I not know? I don't know. I it's a shame, but now I do. I'm glad you, you and Luke told me about it. Um, El Bradley, you're showing some really good looking ones today. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We're, we're up to 84 live viewers. Make sure if you're joining us late, you type in hashtag tomato in the comments, and I'll be drawing a couple names at the end of the show um, and giving you your choice of some seeds. They're not all from the episode for today because a lot of what I'm showing today, I don't have extras of, but I will show you what will be given away. Um, and if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, please subscribe, Mr. And Mrs. Tomato Head. That would be um, very helpful. And make sure you join our Facebook group, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. There it is, Tomato Lovers Collective and Swap. Welcoming to all people of all tomato um, obsession, whether you're new to becoming an addict of tomatoes to you've been an addict for many years, come here and we will become family with you very quickly. I trust you that. All right. All right. This next one, I'm going to have to preface this with the story is how this came to be. This didn't fall into soil. This was intentionally put into soil because I think I shared this a couple episodes back. We gave my 26 year old son when Rob and I were planting seeds a couple weeks ago, Rob had the bright idea to say, let's live, let's let Jake choose a few. It actually was a very good idea. Jake has been my little Ansel. He, he Years ago, like he was picking coyote cherry tomatoes with me from the garden, even as a, a wee little boy. So he loves tomatoes. Riley, our daughter, um, she didn't develop a love for tomatoes until more recently. But Jake was always my little baby tomato head. And so he's living at home with us right now. And so Rob's like, let's let him have your spreadsheet. By the way, Rob doesn't know the extent of the spreadsheet, by the way. He's seen bits and pieces if he he's seen me scroll through it so he knows it's trouble <laughs> but um yeah so i gave jake the spreadsheet he chose four varieties you wouldn't know he's 26 i will tell you that i mean he is in real life he's not an immature guy but he chose varieties because of the names being funny so this next one these seeds were given to me as a gift from Lydia at Carolina's Paradise on Etsy. And the name isn't anything bad, but my son saw it that way. I'll show you what it is. Large membranous, because the end sounds like anus. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Not even kidding you. That's why he chose it. it was, the other ones he chose... And I'll tell you right now what he chose. He chose sand penis. He chose monkey ass, which I really had no interest in growing any of these, by the way, to be honest with you. Sand penis, monkey ass, large membranous. Oh, there's a fourth one. I have to think of it. I'll have to think. There's a fourth one. This one, I'm like, I don't get it. Why is this one funny? Until he said, oh, the end sounds like anus. <laughs> funny. Okay. But the tomato looks pretty spectacular. 
sort of, although now I'm looking at it close up, the interior not so. I swear I didn't touch anything that time. Not a thing. I think that's Jake from upstairs telling me I shouldn't be making fun of him. I didn't touch anything. I don't know what I did. All right, let me get my slides back up. Hang on. Twice in one episode. I swear. And there, I don't know that I've ever done it twice in one episode before. You guys are the lucky ones. All right, let's get back to large membranous. So this is this information is from Carolina's Paradise on Etsy. If you've never checked her shop out, she's got a great shop, really unique varieties, a lot of Eastern European stuff, which I love. She's just started carrying some Jarsons too, which is really exciting, bringing them here to the United States. Um, she gifted me these seeds a while ago. She said, this is a really big and fancy tomato. Most fruits are in the one and a half pound range. All right, I don't understand what that says. The fruit has red flesh and clear skin with a very good balanced old fashioned flavor, heirloom flavor, a powerful growth. It's been developed since 2009 from Portuguese Monster. Um, they keep producing it, it looks like, to develop a very large tomato. This seeds are the descendants of some really large specimen. I'm not really sure. I think the the um, metric and non-metric, so I'm not sure what that says, so I, I wouldn't pretend to translate it. But seeds are from a very large speci specimen that was from Utah's largest tomato for several weeks. Large membranous. No, have not yet potted up sand penis, but I will tell you, because it, I, you know, the, my process, I, I add soil up, so it hasn't needed a potting yet, but I will tell you, no kidding aside, that thing grew tall and fast. Not even kidding. Not even kidding. Um, Sathya, Lydia said she sends the best gifted seeds to TLC members. I don't doubt that at all. She is one of the most generous people I've met when I met her. I think I placed a couple orders first and then I wrote her a message on Etsy, introduced myself, told her about the group. And all of a sudden we're both like, do, 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 do. we must be friends. Do, 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 do. So I sent her some seeds. She sent me a whole lot more seeds than I sent her. Um, and some that she doesn't even have in her shop, a lot that are very rare Eastern European things, um, stuff that people have been looking for for a long time that I'm very gift, very blessed to have. So Lydia, if you're watching, thank you. And I love you. Um, she keeps adding new things to her shop. I'm growing a ton from her shop this year. Cop Copper Pipe was one of them. If you guys remember that from one of my epic, you know, six hour, <laughs> no, three hour long six episode series. Um, what else am I growing from her? A Toile Chocolate. Um, there's several other things I'm growing from her. And now Large Membranous. <laughs> I like big Tums and I cannot lie. I get it, Riverdale Gardens. I get it. This one actually doesn't look so bad. If I showed you a picture of sand penis, that I, I had to ask Rob. I said, are you going to be comfortable harvesting something that looks like this? Because it looks like the name. I can't believe I can't think of that fourth one. <gasps> what are you talking about? You planted that thing? Tell me you didn't. I thought you hated Black Beauty too. Why would you up pot Black Beauty? Is it April Fool's joke? Or maybe, I know Kina hates it. Maybe you haven't grown it. Oops, I should reserve my opinions to myself. Somebody during our um, Tomato Talk Live on Friday. Oh, it was Craig Lahoulier. Only Craig Lahoulier, our new friend, who, by the way, we're working uh, onto rebooking. He's if you guys watch the episode, he's just the nicest guy. And he's already like, when can I come back on? Seriously. Like we're not knocking down his door. I mean, we are, but we're not, if you know what I mean. So he, um, he, 
ask Jen or ask us both if we have a poker face when it comes to tasting tomatoes. And Michael, Kelly, and I both laugh like Jen has no poker face when it comes to tomatoes. I do to a point, but man, you, if you have me taste Black Beauty or ugh, there were a couple last year, anything with a lot of antho, Black Strawberry a couple of years ago, ugh. and last year we grew a very unfortunate variety called Green Zebra and P20. I didn't realize P20 was the same as OSU Blue. OSU Blue and Dancing with Smurfs, they were our hated varieties from years ago. Also very antho. Ugh. Ugh. Want nothing to do with it. So I have poker face to a point, but you give me a lot of antho. Ugh. Spitting it out. Craig, Craig is coming back. We don't know when yet. I have to email him back. Can you believe that? He's waiting on an email from me. Terrible. So you've never grown it. I did not know that, Jen. How do I not know this? It's probably a spinner. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to grow it once, right? I mean, you of all people, you grow 500 varieties plus every year. I mean, you can't just take my or Kina's word for it. Kit, Kina's mom loves it. It's a spitter. I will tell you, it's a spitter. <laughs> um, cello. Is this the cello micro dwarf you're talking about, Amanda? Cello is a spitter. Or are you talking about Black Beauty? Because cello is the same as yellow micro dwarf, and I just felt like it didn't have any flavor at all. I can't des even describe what it tastes like, but actually considering how this episode is going, I probably could. Yeah, describe it. Describe it. Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. I didn't like it. Is that Black Beauty? Oh, interesting. Cello. Interesting. I just felt it had zero flavor. Zero. Like cardboard, which I guess is a spitter. I mean, it's certainly not enjoyable. D, I found a sister. I don't like Black Beauty or Black Strawberry either. Yeah, it's got this, that antho tastes like soap to me. A little bit, like Lucid Gem last year had some antho at the top and one of Bradgate's varieties. I haven't been a fan of his new stuff lately, actually. Um, but that was actually good. A little antho I can handle. Uptown Funk last year was one of my favorites. And that's got Indigo Rose as one of the crosses, but it also has Malachite Box and Pink Berkeley Tie-Dye, which are two of my all-time faves. Um, yeah, didn't like Black Beauty. Francis, I found Black Beauty tasted like dirt. Oh, gosh. We wanted to love it, too. We wanted to love it. Um, it's so beautiful. And it was so prolific. But then you cut in the inside, and I wish I had a picture. If I didn't have to worry about internet issues, I could pull up some thick pictures. But some of the antho varieties that you see, you slice into it and it's got like a like a brown, almost anemic look on the inside. And I can already tell what that taste is. I shouldn't be generalizing, but that's what black beauty looks like on the inside. And it, it gets more black depending on how much sun it gets. It really is beautiful. But ugh, good luck with that, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> that's where my poker face ends. Uh-uh. Nope. And OSU Blue is used for a lot of antho variety crosses. So had I known about Green Zebra and P20 being the same as OSU Blue, oh, that was such, that tasted like Black Beauty to me. Uh-uh. Yuck. All right. So let's, we're, that was large membranous, which you can, I think you can actually purchase it from Carolina's Paradise. She gave it to me as a gift. Um, I'm noticing something from the photos now, if you guys look, and it's the same look as Sicilian Godfather, which is one of my most anticipated that I think was in episode one of my grow list. See, there's like a, somebody's thumb went through the skin. I like that. That means thin skin. Sicilian Godfather was the same. All right. What's next? Okay. This is, next one is number 10, believe it or not. Our last one. And so, Ramonte, if you're still here, I might be able to use you. I've done extensive research on this variety, extensive. Hang on, let me turn on. Need a little heater all of a sudden. And because of where it comes from, um, which I'm not really quite clear on where it comes from, Eastern Europe somewhere, it's called different. Oh, here comes Rory the Wonder Cat again. Oh, now she's screaming. Come here, little girl. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Come here. 
Let me turn off the heater. She'll come near. Um, this was on my most wanted. And Deb, um, Deb gave it to me. And I, I think James Maxwell, you also gave it to me. But I thought they were named different things. So this is where the confusion comes in. My most wanted list has it as clairvoy clairvoyant sorcerer. This. Read by M. A. Ivensov, and my I didn't get to research the origin. I forgot to ask you, Ramante. I'm thinking either Latvia, Russia, or Ukraine. If I don't know if you're still here and can confirm, um, but clairvoyant sorcerer seems to be called. Can't hear the kitty. You will hang on. Um, come here, Warzies. 85 people want to say hello. Let's find out about clairvoyant sorcerer. So it's called different things on different sites. So it's called cunning wizard. I don't think I'm wrong in taking the Russian name. I'm getting all kinds of names. So here's all the names I'm finding. And I think it's all the same variety. Visionary sorcerer, clever sorcerer, shrewd sorcerer, cunning wizard. I think that's it. Unless I'm mistaken, they are all the same variety. Because when I put in the Russian name, I'm coming up with all of those. So I don't think they're just part of the same series. I think they're all the same variety. But regardless of the name, look at this. Look at this tomato. Thank you, Deb and James, for sending this to me, by the way. Um, and I'm sorry for both of you. I, I thought one was clever wizard, one was clairvoyant sorcerer, but I think they're the same. Um, and tomatoeden.net has this in stock, I believe. Um, here's the story. This I got from seminac.in.ua. Clairvoyant Sorcerer. This is a new variety selected by our friend and colleague, M.A. Ivansov. So I guess a colleague from seminac.in.ua Um from Ukraine. Yeah, I think it's Ukraine also, Linda. Thank you. Um, they are, I'm almost positive they are different translations. First, I thought they were different from the same series, but then when I, that name underneath Clairvoyant Sorcerer there, when I put that into Google and even like the, I don't even know what the Russian symbol like um, alphabet is, but when I put those in, they're all coming up with what seem to be the same variety. So those are different translations. It would be a cool series though. You are right, Amanda. My girls agree that it is gorgeous and looks delicious. Seeds fell into soil for this when I got it. Absolutely. So bread or selected by our friend and colleague, M.A. Ivansov, tall, medium, late, very productive, Fruits are beautiful, pear-shaped with ribs around the stem, dense orange-pink outside and inside, very fleshy with dense marble flesh, juicy, multi-chambered, very few seeds. Not a fan of that, but I'm looking. It's got enough seeds for me. I like more seeds. I love the shape of this, too. Aren't, isn't that spectacular? Love it. Um, then Tomati Pomodori.ru in Russia says, Shrewd Sorcerer is a collectible variety. And then it says on tomato tomatoes, we have seeds of this tomato from a private collection. Um, tall, medium, late, very productive. Height is around 1.5 meters. Beautiful pear shaped, marbled pulp juicy. All right, I think some of these sites are copying information from each other. Okay. Now this history is taken from a translation, so bear with me, it says, Creation of this variety is 100 poods grew next to the variety Ivan Kupala. As a result of their cross pollination and sowing of Ivan Kupala seeds, a new variety was obtained with very high taste and high yield, which the authors called Coldun. After the sorcerer variety had been stabilized, it was pollinated with pollen from the serendipity variety. The resulting variety was named Clever Sorcerer in 2017. This variety is stabilized. Did you follow any of that? Because I did not. I did not. I've read that now a couple of times and I'm like, 100 poods, Ivan Cupola. Okay, called it Coldun. 
I think that's sorcerer. Then they cross it with serendipity. I don't know. Pulp Tomato Eden says she she simplifies it, which I appreciate. Oh, it's Ukraine, Ukrainian selection. Okay. Um, which we thought cross garden, sorcerer, and serendipity is the cross. What simpler? Stable, the fruits are large, bicolor, plums, heart with ruffles, the pulp is bicolor, juicy, very sweet and tasty, super productive variety. Come on. Oh, Deb, cunning wizard. Now I need to go check and see if I have that one. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good one. Deb says, I got clairvoyant sorcerer from Ukraine and I got, oh, cunning wizard from Tomato Eden. I'm growing both this year. Gosh, I wonder if they're different because everything I'm finding says they're the same. But I guess you'll see. You can be our test bunny. I thought they were different too, which is why the confusion. But um, in doing for going deeper into research, I'm finding that I think they're the same, but maybe not. Maybe not. Um, thanks, Cynthia. If you send me descriptions, I can ask my friend to translate. She's Ukrainian and also knows Russian. I appreciate that. Most of the time, Google Translate helps me out, but sometimes there are things that I need to know and that are, are tough. I will take you up on that. Thank you. And Dee's Garden Adventure sweet tomatoes are right up my alley. Excellent. So that's my 10 tom tomatoes that I'm obsessed with for this week. We got through it in about two hours, which was kind of my goal. Let me see if I can get Rory the Wonder Cat here. Have to, I'll have to go through this one more shot. Come here, Rory. Nope, she's already going upstairs. All right, too bad. I don't think the two Deb are talking about are the same. I'll send you the Russian name. You can you can see. I think they might be, but but I could be wrong. Um, all right. So what am I giving away today? Put make sure you type in hashtag tomato. And I'm taking some seeds from past episodes that I have extras of. So you will have a choice of this beauty from Italy, Corantico di Ravenna, ancient heart of Ravenna. This was one of Alex's um, from Lucky Garden, one of his favorites of last year. I have extra seeds for this. Lloyd E. Fry, um, which I had ordered. It was taking so long. And then Jen just sent it to me. And then I got the order in. So thank you, Jen, for that. Got these from Happy Cat Farms. Supposed to be a really great variety. Purple Light. These came from Bounty Hunter Seeds and have become gone on everybody's grow list this year. Purple Light looks outstanding. Liz Burt, cross of Crandy, Crandy wine, brandy wine and Cherokee purple, bred by Keith Muller from the United States. I have extra seeds for that mystic mustard because both Keena and I were ordering fiends on that one. Is that it? Oh, I meant to get, thought I got it up. To, oh, no, I got that. And my, my banana noir. If there's anybody out there who still does not have seeds for my Bananas Noir, it's a cross between a Nanas Noir and an unknown cherry, which I think is coyote, but I can't confirm. Um, you get a choice of those. So Lloydy Fry, Lizbert, Purple Light, Mystic Mustard, Corantico di Ravenna, Banana Noir, and I'm going to add in, which I always forget about my Jarson one, Tricolor. And if you win and you want any of these for this season still, make sure to let me know. So everybody get your hashtag tomatoes in. All righty. Let's get to the giveaway tool, assuming it's still here. Didn't desert me since I knocked myself out a couple times. Well, we've had 89 people enter. That's awesome. All right. And there's 89 watching right now. That's fantastic. So I'm going to draw five names. Please private message me if you win or email me. Here's my email address. L-E-R-N-I-E -E at me. I've got tomato juice on my keyboard. That's nice. Tomato juice, dirt, and water from watering. Nothing better in the world. That's probably what kicked me out of the broadcast. <laughs> um, okay, so private message me on Facebook is better. But if you're not on Facebook, you can email me. Or if you're on Instagram, too. Um, I keep forgetting that I'm going to Instagram now. So let's draw five names, and you have a choice of any of those. Let's see. First one, number one.
Brianna, my seeds and goo girl. Um, you know, who, who likes the uh, green goo? My girl after my own heart. O Y O L A. Got it. Congratulations, Brianna. Next one. You might still, if you didn't get them in, you might still be able to get them in if you didn't get your hashtag tomato and do it now. Uh, next one, Kathy Lawson. Congratulations, Kathy. That'll go along with the renegade seeds I've owed you forever. Maybe something else. I'm not sure. I think that might be the only one I owe you at this point. I owe a lot of seeds. I'm working on it, gang. All right, number three. And it'll be first come, first serve. Some of them I don't have a lot of seeds for, so message me ASAP if you have one you really want. Shannon McNulty. Congratulations, Shannon. I think I might owe you some seeds too, Shannon. I have, I do have them all written down, gang, I promise. That's number three. Number four. Me and my shadow. One, two, three, four. Me and my shadow. Dun, 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 dun. Probably dating myself here. Okay. And one more. That's actually an old standard. So because I know it doesn't make me old. Number five. My happy place, which makes me smile. Congratulations to you all. And I think I'm changing the episode for next week. I'm going to do Wednesday instead of Thursday because somebody, I have to get a root canal. Wah, wah, I know. So that's, I scheduled that for Thursday morning. I'm thinking Thursday afternoon. I'm probably not going to want to talk all that much. So we'll just preemptively schedule it for next Wednesday, same time, but Wednesday next week instead of Thursday. And thank you all for, for watching. Make sure you watch Jen's live on Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, just again, thank you all for those of you that watch live. Thank you for hanging in there with me and just talking tomatoes and what I'm obsessed with um, at the moment. And um, join our group if you're not a member. We would love to have you. So until next time, gang, peace and love. Get your gratitude on and go grow tomatoes. See you next time.